He was a fan of both the theatrical stage and the TV screen, realizing that they are interrelated. But screen art is able to continue and multiply theatrical traditions. Such a vision of the artistic spectacular form made him a talented director, whose imagination and intuition was ahead of its time and the technical capabilities of television. Very little has been written about him. An outstanding artist, director and TV theorist, although it's hard to overestimate his contribution to domestic teaching of the screen arts. Vadim Chubasov was the first of those who mastered the creative professions on television and the first among those who began to prepare creative shots for television. He was an amazing person. For me, he was a man associated with the Chekhov generation. He looked like Chekhov, especially in recent years, when he had such a beard. He somehow reminded one of Chekhov's characters, or perhaps a young Vinichenko. There was something there from the intelligentsia, which had some kind of continuous cultural inheritance and could hand it down to future generations. And he had a really wonderful encyclopedic level of knowledge. He was an intelligent person, very tactful. With the death of Vadim Chubasov, a whole era, an entire cultural life simply disappeared. We no longer have such people, and there won't be such people in future. Vadim Chubasov was born in Kiev on August 6, 1934. He did not dream, like all the guys, of becoming a pilot, sailor or military guy. At school he studied well and could have taken up any profession. But somehow he was attracted to the side of a screen. Vadim Chubasov remembered his first meeting with art in an article he wrote sometime in 1972. It took place in the Tretyakov gallery near the picture called The Appearance of Christ Before the People. And he mentioned it with incredible warmth and trembling in the heart. Because even then he imagined the picture as cinema art, like a movie. He already wanted to join this art and imagine how it was possible at that time. And so after leaving school without any hesitation, Vadim joined the directing department of the Kyiv State Institute of Theatrical Art. In 1957, after his graduation, the young director was sent to work in the Mykolaiv Regional Drama Theater. This period was perfect for Chubasov. He managed to put on quite a few theater performances in the space of two years. These included plays by well-known foreign authors. However, after some time, Chubasov decided to master a new kind of art, television, which was then at the formative stage and needed enthusiastic young directors. He started work with his team at a studio in Kiev. He already had his own team in the first year of work. He set tasks for himself and his team that could not be performed by normal people. Theatrical experience came in useful for the young director. Vadim Chubasov worked responsibly and enthusiastically at the Kyiv television studio, searching for new forms of presentation from the screen, experimenting all the time. His creative biography contains this fact. When in the first year of work in television Chubasov screened one of the plays of English playwright John Boyden Priestley, he tried an experiment. A pavilion, which had all four walls, was built in the studio, a closed space. TV cameras were located on the outside of the wall. The actors couldn't see them. 
Chibasov did incredible things. He set things up, whether that was possible or impossible. The actors themselves recalled that they didn't understand what angle the camera was filming them from. That's because the camera could be filming from the door, a hole in the wall, from the fireplace, or from some kind of curtain. That is, actors did not understand at all what was going on. They did not even know whether they were being filmed. Chibasov would say things like, actors should exist independently from the cameras filming them. Besides, the equipment was there in the first place to film actors who were living their own lives. For the current generation, which uses smartphones and other gadgets, having the ability to watch programs from various television channels, it's hard to imagine how historically difficult these achievements on television really were to pull off. Now TV exists in recordings. Back then everything was shown live on air. Working with Vadim Lvovich Chubasov, we almost created movies for television, which were long and fantastic. Of course, it was incredibly difficult for the director who was behind the glass. I can remember Vadim being so exhausted when the performance was over with. In fact, it was amazing television. It was nervous, but it was really interesting to work. Vadim Chubasov's TV shows aroused interest among viewers and experts in the field of on-screen creativity. These included Hunter's witticism by Ostap Vishnya, the word of the bard, on barbed wire, based on the works of Alexander Dovzhenko. The first day of the feast, a play by Turkish playwright Nazim Hikmet, and others. Television gradually developed and gained popularity among the population. Then the Soviet Communist government decided to turn it into a means of ideological influence. The decree of the Central Committee on the Further Development of Soviet Television was issued in 1960. The authorities criticized the state of television at the time, which supposedly duplicated cinema and theater without any need, and didn't promote the achievements of the Soviet people. Party officials started interfering in the creative activities of television. At that time, Chubasov worked as acting editor-in-chief of the literary and dramatic editorial staff. He did not belong to the ranks of the Communist Party and so raised doubts among bosses as to his political reliability. The question that everyone always asks, why did Vadim Chubasov leave TV? At one of the meetings, where it was necessary to compile a report on completed work and future plans, Vadim began to talk about things unacceptable to anyone. He began to talk about how and what he should write. For example, he couldn't understand the reason why they decided to take away the anchor of the show Learn to Dance. Was it because someone didn't like him because of his behavior? Or wasn't he dressed in the right way? But he was dressed decently. Of course, the next morning Vadim Chubasov was no longer acting officer. He was forced to write a statement, but left to work in a children's television studio. Everyone understood that it was not for long. It was from that time that Chubasov decided to devote his life to the education of young screen artists. In 1966, he enrolled at the postgraduate school of the All Union State Institute of Cinematography in Moscow. And in three years, he returned to Kiev and began teaching at the Kiev Karpenko Kari Theater Cinema and Television Institute. As a longtime practitioner and a scientist in the field of television, he was also invited to teach at the Faculty of Journalism at Kiev State University and at the Institute of Radio and Television Staff Qualification. From 1975, 
Vadim Chubasov, for the first time in Ukraine, began to train specialists for the post of television director. He developed a number of programs with friend Viktor Kisin. Programs like Actor Skill, Film and Television Direction, History of Directing Theater and Cinema, History of Drama. For the benefit of future employees of the theater, cinema and television, Chubasov introduced a form of training whereby students staged performances. Performances were staged and there were diploma-level performances. Many works prepared by the students of Chubasov under his leadership enjoyed tremendous success. The real sensation was the production of William Shakespeare's King Richard III. It was live participation in the play. I was in one scene there, I played a priest. It was an amazing job, absolutely. It was such a reading of Shakespeare, which I had not seen before or since that time. I have seen several performances of Richard III, Kharkiv Theater, Georgian Theater, on professional stages. I did not see such a performance as the one Vadim Chubasov put on with his students. Former colleagues of Vadim Chubasov remember that he was very fond of researching and gaining new knowledge. He had some books with him all the time. He read, studied, and then tried to share knowledge with them, first and foremost with his students. Chubasov was a very deep and humane person who cared about the fate of his graduates from the institute. He was very strict in the requirements for the profession. This is a very important and rare feature. We always forgive something. But if the issue here is your work about responsibility, then there should be no discounting. Such famous screen art figures as screenwriter and film director Volodymyr Popkov, producer and music director Maxim Papernik, Documentary director Shevchenko Prize winner Anatoly Borsuk and others studied Chubasov's directorial skills. You know, this is like a recommendation. No other recommendation was required if you were a student of Vadim Chubasov, so you're a specialist of the highest quality, a top professional. Vadim Chubasov became head of the Department of Film and Television in 1985. He didn't stop in his creative quest. 1989 was a very important year for him because he received training at Perspective, one of the first independent video studios in Moscow. The creative result of this internship was the creation of a documentary and educational film called Serhii Eisenstein – Lessons in Montage. The film received the highest rating of specialists and is still used to train future directors. But according to filmmakers, Vadim Chubasov's highest merit is found in the Kyiv Molodis International Film Festival, which supports the work of young filmmakers. He was one of the founders of the Molodis Festival, a very interesting festival. Now, this festival, which is included in the top festivals in the world, is in the class of best festivals and has no equivalence. It's absolutely unique. It was from the mid-1970s that for the first time in Ukraine the recruitment of students for the new specialism of television directing began. Vadim Chubasov, Ukrainian theater and television director, film critic and educator, outstanding artist who did so much for the development of Ukrainian culture. He was a man of colossal internal discipline and self-organization, and the success of his students was always the best reward for him.